Hello, trainers, and welcome to another episode of Pokeology, a show where each week I talk to you about the biology of Pokemon based on the research that I have found. My name is Professor Sacrum, and this week we will be delving deep into the oceans of Kalos to find out more about our little friend, Clowitzer. I hope you remember the questions that we use to discover everything we'll need to know about each Pokemon. If not, here's a quick rundown. What does it look like? What does it eat? How does it survive? What makes it special? Where do I find it? And how do I train it? Like last time, we're going to start off with the easy question. What does Clawitzer look like? It looks like this. Clawitzer are medium-sized blue crustacean Pokemon who are fully aquatic with black stripes on their body. Clawitzer have no difference between genders and have two largely different sized claws. The left claw is the smaller of the two, and is primarily blue with a black stripe on the back end and a yellow point at the front end. The right claw, however, is built entirely different, being about twice the size of Clowitzer's body. However, the color scheme is the same. Clowitzer's claw has a hinge that allows this Pokemon to open and close its claw at will. This claw also has two barbells protruding from the front end. Now I want you to take a closer look at the ridges that form Clowitzer's shell along its body and claws. We're going to discuss that in another portion of this video, but I wanted you to take notice of it. Now before we move on to the next section of this video, I want to point out the average size of a Clawitzer. Most Clawitzer are about 4 foot 3 and weigh about 78 pounds. Let's compare them to the average young adult. Like last time, I'll be the example here. I am 5 foot 10 and weigh about 145 pounds. That makes a difference of only 19 inches and 67 pounds, which is pretty big for a crustacean. Well, like most other crustaceans, Clawitzer are bottom feeders and enjoy to eat things like krill, brine, plankton, and the occasional pokepuff. And when looking for bigger prey, they hunt mostly by hiding out and stunning that prey with a blast of bubbles that they shoot from their claw. Believe it or not, that claw is actually the biggest reason for its survival. Being Clawitzer's primary weapon, it is able to shoot out anything in its path. This is because when Clawitzer's right claw shuts, it releases a blast of pure converted energy that can momentarily reach temperatures of the sun. Now it may seem like Clawitzer's mobility would be crippled because of the claw's abnormal size, but that's not the case. In fact, it's quite the opposite because the claw has an opening in the back for a propulsion system that allows Clawitzer to move at speeds up to 60 knots. This is about 69 miles per hour, or roughly about 111 kilometers per hour. The only reason that this is possible is due to the fact that both the water storage tank and the organ that contain pressurized air are in the one claw and not throughout the entire body. This also explains why Clawitzer's right claw is so much bigger than the rest of its body, and is another component for its high speed. Now you're probably thinking, how does Clawitzer keep itself from moving when firing from its claw? Well, remember when I told you to keep in mind the ridges along Clawitzer's body and claws? Well, when Clawitzer attack, they straighten out their bodies, which causes a block and water flow from behind, making it stop. It's like Clawitzer put on brakes when they fire their cannon. Clawitzer's claw also helps it defend against other predators like quillfish, dragalge, and whalmer. But now that I've told you how it survives and how it eats, I'm going to tell you something that you may not have even thought about. That's right, Clawitzer was used in the War of Kalos 3,000 years ago. If you don't believe me, let's take a look at its Pokedex entry. Clawitzer is classified as the Howitzer Pokemon. A Howitzer looks like this. It is a part of a cannon's barrel. Clawitzer's claw is a part of the barrel. Clawitzer's Pokedex entry also says that their enormous claws launch cannonballs of water powerful enough to pierce tanker hulls. How would we know that unless it was tested? But if my evidence is still not convincing enough, well, think about marine warfare. What Pokemon would be better for war on the oceans? Kingdra? No. Samurott? No. Magikarp? Possibly. But in all honesty, it only makes sense to use Clawitzer as the primary assaulting Pokemon in marine warfare. You sunk my battleship? Please, I'll sink your entire platoon with a single water pulse from my teeny crab. You can do either one of two things. You can fish for Clawitzer with the Super Rod, or catch a Clawitzer with the Good Rod and level it up to 37 where it will evolve to Clawitzer. Here are the exact locations where you can find Clawitzer or Clawitzer. Okay trainers, now for the moment you've all been waiting for. I'm going to teach you how to train your little blue bomber. 
The first thing that you're going to want to keep in mind is that Clawitzer is a pure water type Pokemon, meaning that it is extremely vulnerable to grass and electric type moves. However, it does mean that he is resistant to ice, steel, fire, and other water type moves. Next, you're going to need to know that Clawitzer has access to only one ability, Mega Launcher. Mega Launcher boosts the power of Sphere and Pulse type moves by 50%. Here's a list of moves that are powered up by Mega Launcher. Water Pulse, Dark Pulse, Aura Sphere, Dragon Pulse, and Heal Pulse. The first set I'm going to tell you about is meant for single battles. Start off with the Clawitzer with a modest nature and spread the EVs 164 HP, 252 Special Attack, and 92 Speed. Then give it the moves Water Pulse, which has a chance to cause confusion and is Stab, Aura Sphere and Dark Pulse for type coverage, and finally, Ice Beam for those pesky grass types. Give it the choice specs to hold and you're good to go. Something else to think about would be to exchange Water Pulse for Scald, if you'd rather have that chance to burn, and swap Dark Pulse for U-Turn. If that's the case, then you're going to want to switch the item to a Life Orb. This next set is almost exactly the same except for the EV spread and the item. Again, you'll want a modest nature, but put 252 in special attack and special defense, then put 6 in HP and give it the assault vest. Keep the moves Water Pulse, Aura Sphere, Dark Pulse, and Ice Beam. This set is to treat Clavitzer as a Pokemon that is capable of taking hits from special attacks. This final set is best for double battles and requires you to have a Clavitzer with a sassy nature while holding the Shell Bell item. Spread the EVs, 200 HP, 148 defense, and 160 special defense. Then give it the moves Heal Pulse, Aura Sphere, Dragon Pulse, and Water Pulse. And there you have it, Clawitzer, the little war machine that could. That's my show for this week. Remember, if you like this video, to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe my channel for next week's Pokemon. While you're at my channel, don't forget to check out last week's video where I talked about Rhydon. Also, don't forget to leave your friend code and a suggestion for a Pokemon you'd like to hear about in the comment section below. By doing that, you enter yourself in the Sakurum Raffle, where you have the chance to win the Pokemon discussed in this week's episode. Last week, I raffled off Rhydon, and I want to congratulate our winners, Tazo Luz, Chris Albert, and Edward1817. You can send me a message via email or Twitter letting me know when you're ready to receive your Rhydon. Again, my name is Professor Sacrum, and please join me next week for another pretty episode of Pokeology. See you next time.